It's five. We're live. It's Thursday. I'm Joe Spino along with Darren Sear. How you doing, Darren? Pretty good, Joe. How are you tonight? Not bad. Paul is up in Gloucester playing around with fish or something. I don't know what he's doing, he's but he won't be able to be here today. He's and it's just as well because he doesn't contribute anything to the show right. anyhow. Yep. You know? Yep. You agree with that? Totally. Yep. Folks, we're going to try it again. We're going to see if we can actually hear what you're saying. So don't forget to call us at 781 780 9460. We really want your comments today. We're going to start with Frankly Joe. Now, folks, I hate to say this, but I confess I never liked milk. I really drank it. So when the news that Garlic Farms was closing down, I, did, I didn't raise an eyebrow. But in terms, in real terms, it's a major blow to the city's econo economy. Lost jobs and lost tax revenue is never a good thing for an already struggling community. The drink your milk refrain that so dominated in earlier time no longer has currency. Milk consumption has declined dramatically. That is a reality. How then reacts and adjusts to this latest drawback is what's important. So that just was sprung upon us, wasn't it? Just like that, overnight. Yeah. Well, you know, even the employees, they woke up one morning, told to go to a meeting, and they, they were told that they were going to be closing down in three months, I think it is. So, I mean, I know as much as you know anybody. nothing about it just like everybody right. else, right. I, I do know that um, Gorilla Farms has been having an issue with the traveling, having to travel through the cities to get out to the highways. To, 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 you know, it takes a lot of time to well, do that. Well, that may be an issue. You know, I'm a capitalist confirmed, yep. but that type of capitalism troubles me. That's insensitivity. Right. And I think you're absolutely right about that, and I, and I applaud the mayor for speaking out about it. Right. Look, they're closing down nationally many places. Lynn, by the way, is not just the only one. They're closing. I, I think they have home bases in Texas. Texas uh, right. I don't know whether it's Dallas, Houston, or what. Yep. But, and I, folks, get this one. They call themselves Garlic Farms. Now, when it comes to the city of Lynn, I never knew the dump site was a farm. So I don't know about their truth and advertising. You get what I mean? Yep. Uh, look, Lynn has gone through many incarnations. We were talking about this off camera. We were the shoe city of the world at one time. Right. And then what? GE. Yeah. At one time, they had like 15,000 employees there. Exactly. And you had Norelco, Sylvania here. Yeah. Champion Lamps. Champion Lamp. Yeah, and... Harvard Box Company. You're right. Yeah. So we've done a lot of this, and, and the city has had to adjust with these new realities. Right. And the thing... I like that. I like your phrase. Which one? The one that you told me about change is a constant. I hadn't thought about that. That's very good. You're yeah. a bright guy. You know that? Thank you. So, folks, change is a constant, and how you... You're the city council president mm -hmm. and the mayor. Respond to these changes. That's the key. Yep. So let's get on to a subject that really blew my mind. And folks, think about this. And I really like to have your response here. Did the Lynn School officials act prudently by not publicizing a potential bomb threat? And our number here is 781-780-9460. You know, I don't think it would have been a good idea. You know, it was proposed to take place tomorrow, right? Tomorrow, so uh, Monday, I believe. Well, uh, Monday's Tuesday, a holiday. Tuesday. Right. You know what I heard was from, from a teacher? I was up in English high school today. And by the way, I want to thank and applaud Tom Strangey, mm -hmm. who was there, yep. along with Kathy Latham, right. the retiring superintendent. Yep. And the police presence was beefed up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So they took it seriously, and they didn't take any chances. Right. But I think it was prudent, Darren, to not get people panicking. You know, someone said to me, a couple of teachers mentioned, this is called kids trying to hustle along a weekend. You got it. You got it. You think that makes sense to you? I do. I can tell you this, and um, I don't know if you were there at Easton, but uh, when Andy Feil first took over as vice principal, they were having a lot of fires. And what would happen is wastebasket fires, things like that, or somebody pulling an alarm, and they'd wind up sending the kids home early from school. Yeah. So what Annie Filer did was, his first day as, as vice principal, we all went outside for the fire drill. We're all standing out there. He brought us all back into the cafeteria, and he made us sit in the cafeteria for the rest of the, rest of the day. There was not another fire and another alarm. So, you know, there's a way of handling it, and I think the way that they, they did what they did in English was the proper way. They investigated it. Yeah. They, you know, brought in police just to play on the safe side and the 
superintendent. I mean, I, I, I can tell you, they're unbelievable. Yeah, well, look, they took it seriously, and they were prudent about it. Yep. That's the whole point. And they also, they did notify all the parents with a robocall. Um, so hey. that if any parent wanted to feel as though that they wanted to keep their child so, home, they could. Look, folks, this may sound, well, let me, let me just throw it out there for your, for your thought. Look, I'm not, I think it's horrific that we've had, we've had 16 right. shootings, school shootings this year. Yep. Believe it or not, folks, that's down from past. Mm -hmm. It's historically trending downward, mm -hmm. even though people don't want to believe it because, right. you know, it's publicized. I believe that when they take a look at victims of shootings or mayhem or stuff like that, the percentage in schools is minuscule compared to the general public. Right. So you could extrapolate from that, the school is the safest place to be. Yep. Right? Still. Still. Right. Now, people can tell me all day long that I'm better off flying than driving, but I don't buy it. I don't like going on my airplane. I'd rather be driving than flying myself. Me too. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't, you know, it's a control thing. Yep, me too. Now, I'm going to ask you, this is interesting. I'm going to throw it at you and you folks out there. Should schools consider a four-day work week? Well, I believe in a four-day work week, 10-hour days, um, longer weekends. They have it in Europe and a lot of places. I worked a uh, uh, four-day work week, and it was great. It was unbelievable. I know there might be some issues where parents might have to find um, uh, something for the kids to do on, the, on either that Friday or Monday that they don't go in. Hmm. But just think about the money that the city would save as well by not they having do. to open it. On average, it's about 3 or 4%, yep. by the way. Not a lot, but 3 or 4% of $200 million is a it's piece a lot of change. Of money. Right. Yeah can be used for other things. Now, as far as, and Mike, Mike, for those people who say, wait a minute, you know, what are we going to do with our kids? Yep. Well, my question is, what do you do with them in the summertime? Right. And I like what you were saying earlier, is you come up with programs. They did, yeah. So for teachers, if they wanted to, to participate in uh, museums and is sure. getting active in the community. That's right. Volunteering. I mean, look at Lynn. We're always talking about how dirty it is. Well, it's a great thing. They can... Kids it's, go it's really a, it's, and plus those teachers who want to spend that day supervising an activity or going yep. to the museum or field trip or whatever, they pick up an extra piece of change. Right. Okay. Yep. What they found in the places where they, they've instituted this in a number of places, by the way, mm -hmm. it's particularly working well in rural areas. Yep. But it's now moving into the cities. They found that absenteeism, both students and teachers, evaporates. Teachers are coming and staying rather than leaving because they're not burnt out. They have more time to prepare their lesson plans for that extra day. Mm -hmm. And they attract teachers to come into the profession because they say, oh, four-day week, you know, not bad. Yep. The hours are longer, it is true. They add about a, somewhere between an hour and an hour and a half more per day, yep. which they stagger so it doesn't affect traffic and stuff like that. It's worth looking into, that's all, you know? It's an interesting yep. no, concept. No, I like the idea. So... Consistent with schools, this Tuesday at a council meeting, I noticed a little quick byline there in which the Hood School in your ward is in need of windows, roofs, and stuff of that nature to the tune of $5.8 million. Yep. Allegedly, up to 80% reimbursement. Right. Which would leave the city at best with a $1.2 million shortfall. Correct. Can we afford it? We have to afford it. I hear that all the time. And, Why? Well, the reason being is if, if we don't, preventative maintenance, uh, we haven't been doing that on a lot of our buildings. It Look at Avon School. Oh, that's a tough shape. I heard people tell me about that. Right. But, but was that proposal, that idea of renovating Hood School, was that factored into the $14 million that was borrowed? No. Here's, here's what happened with Hood School. We had, have to replace the roof and we have to replace the windows. And the way Hood School was built, the wall is actually made of window. Yeah. It's all glass. So it was originally going to cost about $4 million. But because when you spend a certain amount of money, the state requires you to make the building more handicap accessible. So that's where that extra money is going. So we're going to get 80% of the, the totally. 5.2, yeah. uh, 5.8, I'm sorry, yeah. million. Yeah. So, and we are going to have to come up with... It's, a million it's, two, yeah. Right, and, it, and it's better to do that now than having to come up with 
But what does that do to our budget? That's the point I'm asking. I mean, if we're on a, if we're on a narrow budget now, doesn't this upset the apple cart somewhat? Well, yeah, it does. But what we do is we bond out the money. So we pay Father, it back. For you're the, allowed to do that yep. for $4 million. Is that right. correct? Yep. All right. So it's not going to be a hit all at once. Right. Exactly. Credit card. Yep. Get 0% if you can. Oh. Bond rating went down. Yep. At that same meeting, uh, there was a PowerPoint presentation. Mm -hmm. And I think we'll try to run down it. It's uh, Lynn Development, and it's the next phase, even though the word phase isn't up there. And it's in total, it's about $180 million that's either in the ground or being proposed that seems to be ready to go. Right. So let's go down one at a time. The Beacon Chevrolet site that we've been talking about forever and a day, that's mm -hmm. about $85 million? Yep. $344. It's about $100 million. And it's gone be, up? It's uh, escalated. It'll probably be a little bit more, yeah. So that's a good thing. So yep. this figure is conservative. Right. All right. So 344 market rate apartments. I mm -hmm. understand that. Is that correct? Yep. And that's about to go on the ground. The conservation, we talked about it last week or the week before the Conservation Commission, the city of Lynn, finalized the, uh, uh, the problem there. Right. With they should be, uh, construction should start in the fall. September so We were hoping for the spring, but um, it looks like the fall. Better late than never. Right. So now we go to Central Square, and I'm not even familiar with this, but apparently there's going to be seven market rate units put in there, and that's going to attract folks or trying to attract folks to work in Boston. Mm -hmm. So that's not going to impact the school system whatsoever. Right. And right. neither is the Beacon Chevrolet site. That's true. Good point. Yeah. And both of them are 2,000-plus per month rentals. Right. So it brings it's in... It's bringing in disposable income, which means that uh, restaurants, stores in the city, uh, grocery stores, they'll be spending the money where they live. So that, in effect, could offset the job losses at Garrelick Farms. Right. Well, I truly believe this, and I say it all the time, that Lynn's future industry is the Linwood construction, building the, the buildings that are going to be down there. And now with the, the, the building that we're talking about down on Monroe Street, which is a $90 million building, um, you know, you're talking about two completely different areas. I understand. And talking with the developers, they're actually looking at ways to uh, possibly start developing Market Street as well, which would be the gateway into the downtown area well, from the wind. Uh, you know, we, we got some terrific comments that we're going to get to a little later on in mm -hmm. the show. And... You're talking about they are interconnected because the Beacon Chevrolet site from Monroe Street to Central Square to Washington Street, the only one that's offline is the uh, Western Avenue one. But those other four that we're talking about are walking distance. Right. And I, and I can tell you this, that in the next three to four years, you will probably see a half a billion dollars worth of construction taking place in Lynn. Probably in another month or two, there's, there's going to be another development um, down on the Linwood. Down by the, on, by, by the uh, General Edwards Bridge? But that's one, but there's even going to be another one. The gear so, plan? No. Nope. Give us a little hint. Gear yeah. plan is, I can't give you All a right. hint because I was sworn to secrecy, but I can tell you that. It's not classified I, information. I, not yet, <laughs> uh, but uh, I've, I've used this statement. Lynn is on the cusp. We are right there, ready to go over to the other side. And um, talking with somebody last night about our roadways, and, and they're looking to bring $70 million worth of road improvements into Lynn. And this is, this is the, all come in the last three or four months with the new mayor. And I can tell you, he's, he's really moving and doing a good so job. So on the downside of the Garlic thing, yep. but the upside is really promising. Right. On that note... We're going to take a very short break, and we'll be right back. Stay tuned. The Haven Project was created to fill a gap in services for homeless young adults in the city of Lynn and surrounding areas, a population that had previously been underserved. One of the many services we provide is job training. And we had this idea. To improve our job training program, we decided to do training in our very own specialty coffee shop. In our experience, we have found that most clients do not have the foundational skills needed to keep a job. Through this social enterprise and with a job training coach, we can address this. This cafe will provide operating funds for all of our programs. 
This has been part of our strategic plan since our inception, and we are thrilled to see this dream come to fruition. You know why you people should tune in every Wednesday, every Thursday at 5? Because we're on the cutting edge. We get news so quick, it's like lightning speed. No sooner do we mention a Surprise. secretive operation is taking place <laughs> that we already found out. So, Council well, President? Well, apparently the porthole has been sold. Really? Yeah. No more... Uh, Roast beef dinners down well, there, huh? For a few more months, you'll probably be able to. And, and I think one of the main reasons why they didn't want to say anything was I believe that um, they haven't told the employees. So I'm assuming now, because the story is breaking. Same thing as the garlic milk thing. Garlic yeah. farms. Um, we are aware of it a little bit, and um, there is some future development which is going to take Proposed place. Proposed to take place on that site? On that site. So what you're going to see, and I'm not kidney is in the next within the next year Lynn skyline is going to look like Boston skyline with with cranes and uh, five and ten story buildings that are going to be started that's to, a good thing built. you mentioned the Linway and I don't know if I'm talking out of school oh. but the era of candle pin bowling is gone now too because yeah. I understand that uh, the Crowley family is uh, now uh, officially uh, Close. going to be moving on to other other ventures yep and that's true. And, I mean, it's a, a, been a dwindling business for years. I mean, 20 years ago, you had, what, six or seven bowling alleys all, in the city? All jam-packed. Every one of them, every night. Every night. And during the daytime, you had right. senior leagues and women leagues and all kinds of other stuff. And, and now, unfortunately, it's just it's no, gone it's just, to the wayside. Just, you know, it's changing times. That's, last week, we broached the subject. Yep. Which, what do we do with parks? Right. Because the same situation is happening with parks. We have yep. to rethink parks. Yep. In fact, we have to rethink a lot of things. The city of Lynn, and this is what I'm really encouraging. Folks, I hope you, hope you appreciate this. You know, we're not going to be a manufacturing community any longer. Right. All right, we're going to be service a industry, and we're going to be an adjunct to Boston. Right. A, be right? a bedroom community is what we're going to become. Precisely. Which is going to be to our advantage in the long haul. Right. And also, we have a lot of beautiful attributes mm -hmm. that we can feature. Yep. Uh, that raw art. I saw the kids from raw art at, at Red Rock the other day yep. when I was walking my dog. And they're out there standing on rocks. I don't know how they're doing it. And they're doing all types of graphic design. And, and that is, and, you know, it's in downtown Lynn, that raw art building, correct? Right. I mean, the, the, the arts that are here in the city. Yeah. And a lot of people don't even realize. I mean, there's, there's a group that puts on plays. All the time downtown in Lynn, um, you can go and you can go into the museum downtown. You know the, the Lynn Museum, yeah. The Lynn Museum, um, the GAR building. Uh, there's so well, much. Wait a minute, hold it now. Don't be cute. Mm -hmm. Do you think the folks out there know what you're talking about when you just say the DAA? What GAR building? DAR. What? Grand Army of the Republic, which it's is probably one of the oldest um, veterans halls in the country. Yeah. Uh, it, it has more historical artifacts from the Civil War and the um, World War I and II in it. And there are, is some stuff in there from the Korean and Vietnam War. But the reason it was set up back in the, during the, the 1800s was to help out the veterans and their families in Lynn that if a family lost a loved one, because of the Civil War, and the, uh, came back and got sick, and they couldn't afford to pay their rent or their mortgage. Uh, they couldn't get heat, mm -hmm. food. The, the it's GAR, a great organization, huh? Yeah, well, it w was probably one of the uh, original, I guess, welfare systems is a way to say it. Insurance policy, extended family, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, you know that uh, in the old days, the grandparents lived with the kids and right. everybody. Yeah. Yep. So, by the way, one of the really 
proponents, did a lot of work for them, was Tim Ring, the late Tim Ring, mm -hmm. uh, who also lived in Yellwood, teacher yep. up at Lane right. High School. Yep. Did a great job. Yep. I mean, they have so many artifacts in that building, and uh, when people walk in there and take a look at it, they're shocked and amazed that it's right here in Lynn. A lot of people don't know about it. We're in the process right now of trying to raise some money to uh, make sure we can preserve the history that's there. The main room, the main hall that's upstairs, hasn't been changed in, a, uh, in over 100 years. Well, that's, uh, it's the Val Vitali boys' office is right down near Below, there. Right, right, they, right they, they rent their office from them. Which is another place that these kids can go on a four-day week. That's right. By the way... Do you like Mother Nature or Mother Earth? Yes, I do. I do myself. Yep. Can we get that up there? The city council gave the green light to a resolution proclaiming Mother Earth is a living being who deserves to be protected. And I think that's admirable. Right. Well, I a young 21-year-old kid. Uh, right. Uh, um, global activities or? Uh, her, the Lisi, and it means honey. Really? Yes, and she is, her and her dad, Juan, Gonzalez are just phenomenal at what they have. They, they're behind-the-scenes volunteers. They do so much for our city and our community. Um, they, they do a Holocaust thing every year. Really? And they bring in Holocaust survivors. I actually met some of them this past year. I mean, they, they, they can't just, be young anymore. No, they're not. Well, the, the, they were in their 90s. I guess. And um, you would never know it. And I mean, the, the, their spirit and the way they were was just so amazing for what they went through in life. One of the great things I like about the city of Lynn, and one of the reasons why it's my comfort zone, and you speak to this often, is so Paul Crowley's also, you know, we're a three mus musketeers here. Uh, living history, mm -hmm. where you can talk to generations, yep. and you learn more by talking to the elders. Right. Now that I'm an elder, listen to me, folks, I finally made it. I never believed that the elders had much to say. Uh, contribute? They, yeah. have, they have more to contribute than, than anybody. All of us, yeah. Yep. I'm one of them, so I can attest yep. to that. Yep. Frankly, Gina. Mm -hmm. oh, no, no. What the? Forget Frankly, Gina. I got to get to Frankly. Uh, I think it's uh, Greg. Is it Frankly Greg? Yeah, Frankly Greg. And you're going to go, we're going to walk this down if I can find it. I don't, you know, folks, bear with me because. Abandoned properties? Yeah. Uh, Oh, there it is. Yeah. Uh, f well, it's actually uh, a number of things. Why don't you hold this? He's, he was talking about, and he makes a great point, about initiative to fix abandoned property and reclaim it for lost taxes. Now, yeah. we, didn't we talk about this at some buildings? Well, we did a little bit, and what we're, in the tri what we're trying to do right now, along with the uh, Neighborhood Development Group, Lynn Housing Authority, is have a judge put, put those buildings into receivership and turn them over to that organization. They can only do a few at a time, and then they have to turn it over to another group or organization to allow them to fix it up. And the money would go back into the community, um, but it's, there's a process. And of course, it's being challenged by the banks and the mortgage companies. Oh, but wow. in Lynn, there are over 500 abandoned properties. As we speak? As we speak. And, and we're working on right now um, to, to put that process and uh, get that process moving forward. So, Greg, did you get that? Uh, they, 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 they agree with you. Yep. Take these abandoned properties, fix them up, and get some tax revenue right. from them, right? And, and I can tell you this, that the uh, neighborhood development group has probably done, since I've been on the council, over 100 of these um, abandoned properties. Multi-family houses, they've come in, bought them from the mortgage company or the previous owners or uh, uh, banks, torn the buildings down and, and built single-family homes because they know the impact that, first of all, the abandoned properties have, but the multi-families. So what they wanted to do was, was build owner-occupied buildings, and they're doing one right now down on Neptune Street. They just bought the land from the GE. And they're, they're putting uh, four houses on that, on that parking lot. And you'll drive by there and you'll see four foundations. And they have, I think they're going to be doing a total of 16 
new units over in the Westland area, and Peter Capano, and Jay Walsh, and Charlie Gata, and Dan Cahill, and the mayor, and all of them, and the GE have all been working on this project for about four or five years, and it's finally starting to happen right sure. now. How about when I drive down Walnut Street, mm -hmm. as I'm on my way to Pachi's to get some wonderful Sicilian food, yep. and I see this development taking place on the left-hand side, going to, yeah, what is that? Uh, that's, that's a private development. That's Menino that's in there doing that. Um, I believe they're going to be townhouses, but I'm not sure. Um, just so that's a number. That's another positive. Right. It's it's all positive. I mean, Lynn, Monroe Street. I'm going to use well, that. We didn't finish up on that. Yeah. The one we went. Yeah. That's supposed to go up ten stories. Ten stories. Um, it's a developer who could do by right, could do a five-story building, uh, but it, instead they chose to do a ten-story building, which makes it a Class A construction meaning steel, you'll see cranes, yeah, like I was yeah. saying down there. First floor is going to be commercial Retail, space, yeah. which right now what we're getting is $3,000 a year in taxes for that lot. Once they pull the permit, which is over $500,000 for that project, we start to get taxes on $100,000 for the commercial space. Question, how come I saw that land was worth almost 700000 it probably is worth that. Okay. $3,000 against 700000 Because there's nothing on it right now. Oh, there's vegetables on it. Well, right. But what we're getting right now for tax dollars, $3,000. Yeah. So you're telling me that if you take the building off the land, you save a ton of money? Yeah. Yes. That's why General Electric was knocking all those buildings down, right. huh? Right. Yep. Aren't they cute? Yep. So... He also feels that we missed the boat with the ferry, and I'm not quite sure of that, but we'll get into that a little later. Mm -hmm. uh, and he talks about zoning downtown, and in many instances, you don't have to do too many zoning changes, do you? Well, in the last four or five years, we've already made a lot of zoning changes. That's why, by that? right, this company has the right to go in there and build a 10-story building. And then, uh, last, oh, there's two other issues he talked about. One was clean up trash and litter. Are uh, we making a concerted effort to make, you know, to say, listen, let's keep this city clean? I, I noticed that it looks a lot cleaner than before. I can tell you this. The last two years, and um, it's been through a private donor that on Saturdays, any trash that you have, you can bring it down to the uh, waste management place on the yep. Linway, dump it for free. And, it's, and the cost of that is being picked up and it's gone on for the last two years. And I believe that they're going to do it again this summer. Question, can you bring TVs and stuff like that or do you have to pay for that? The That's TV, different, right? TV is $20. That you, to get rid of them. To get rid yeah, of Because i got to get rid of one of mine. Yeah. yeah. And you bring that right to the DPW. So you go right in to the, to the TV, uh, DPW building and they'll give you a, a sticker and you can bring the TV right out in the back. Uh, I want to I want to mention to you folks. We got about a minute uh, before we got to go to break here. Is and we talked about that, Dan. You're going to get a bill in July for trash. If you happen to be a little older than him, uh, then like 69, you can go down and you must go to City Hall the first time City out Clark's in Ontario, City Clerk's yep. in order to get that abatement. Mm -hmm. We're going to be back with more information. Our number here is 781-780-9460. Don't be afraid to give us a buzz. Hey. hey. Hi, Michaela. Hey, Chloe. How you doing? I'm doing good. <laughs> so, guess what's coming? What is coming, Chloe? Mosquitoes. Oh, my God. You know what that means? What? They're going to eat you. Eat you. So, you know what you got to do? What you got to protect do? yourself. Mm. Defend yourself. Yes. Against the mosquitoes. You gotta spray. Spray, spray. This summer, don't forget, spray all over. Yep. Don't forget your ankles. Nope. They like that. That's where they get you. They do. And also, if you have any still water sitting around, dump it out because they dump love it. that stuff. And also, if you're wearing dark clothing like Chloe, mm. you gotta wear bright clothing like Michaela so they won't get you. They would eat me alive. Yeah, they would. Keto. Bye bye, swat swat. Thank you for watching. Please <laughs> call number right here. Drop. Have a good day. Peace. I have it. Yep, I have it. And we're back. We're going to get right to Frankly Ralph. 
And what Ralph says, and it's fascinating because it has to do with transportation, which is the tie in mm -hmm. to uh, what uh, Greg was talking about. Oh, sorry about that. Stay, keep that up. Greg also talked about community pathways. Mm -hmm. And I think we were talking about connecting North Shore Community College and you, like a walk a thon, we'd go walk yeah. almost down to City Hall. Right. Is that still in the works? Yeah, uh, one of the, the bike path. The bike path. A lot of yeah. people don't know about that, but it goes. All the way, I think, uh, to Malden, maybe. Might, might from Lynn? Little, from Lynn. It may even go a little further than that. And um, it'll go all the way to the ocean. It's called Bike to the Sea is what it is. What it, well, it's, let's get some information on there and, and get it out there. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, at the next show, I'll bring some information on it. But yeah, it, we it's, will. it's a good thing. Greg, thanks for that uh, comments and, and keep sending them. Now to Frankly Ralph. And he basically says that he doesn't support the ferry. But Salem got more money for its ferry when Lynn gets the shaft, as he puts it, yet again on transportation. He mentions that Somerville's new extension, Salem's new commuter rail station, Chelsea's new computer, I'm sorry, commuter rail station, and he accents this and dedicated bus road to South Station, and Lynn gets the usual, nothing. Is he right? Somewhat. The reason why Salem gets more money than Lynn for, for their ferry is because they have a lot more riders. Probably 10 times the we amount got a of call. riders. Hi, Carla. You're on, frankly speaking. Yes, how are you doing? Very well, and yourself? Yeah, you've been talking about abandoned houses. Council President's here to ask him a question. I've been, I've been here. I've been... On Collins Street Court, there's an abandoned house. It's been abandoned for about 10 years now. I have called the City Hall. I have called several places, and nothing has been done. Okay, let's see if we get a response. Okay. Uh, a lot of these abandoned houses were foreclosures by the banks, and the problem is that a lot of them, they don't know who the actual real owner is because they would, you know, the loans were, were given up by so many different banks. And what the process is, is that the city has to have these bought, uh, houses. They have to come down and register them. And they have to put $500 on every one of these houses. So if the houses need to be cleaned up and the banks aren't doing it, we will go down and we will clean up, clean up the property. Chase, we're always chasing a mortgage company. Uh, as I said, there's over 500 as we speak as we speak in the city of Lynn right now. So and it's a, some it's of a them are process. more than 10 years old. I mean, I have some in my neighborhood since I've been a counselor. The last 15 years have been a bit. Well, let me suggest something to you. A thought just came to my head. Yep. We're always hiring specialty people to do specialty things, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be advisable? I mean, I would have no problem if we said to somebody, listen, you're going to work for commission for the city of Lynn, and what you're going to do is you're going to get the money for all this abandoned property, straighten it all out, yep. and work on commission. Well, Some that's what we're doing with the, with the uh, North Shore, with the neighborhood um, housing. Really? That's, that's what we're trying to do. And I said we were going to the courts to get these houses put into receivership. Lynn Housing would take we over these We have individuals houses. doing that. Yep. And once they get it, then what they would do is go in and rehab the house. Got it. They would hire their own contractors, and then the money that comes back from selling those houses would go to pay in the contractor and any fees that are owed, taxes, or anything like that. And any money that is made off of it, off of those houses would be rolled over so okay. they could put more money into the houses. Our number here is 781-780-946. So I hope that uh, satisfied you, Carla, uh, about a bit and probably what we're doing. And if there's more... Uh, once again, you'll update us. Uh, mm -hmm. And if any of you have any better ideas of how to handle it, that's what you want to hear. Definitely. That's why you're here to start yep. with, by the way. Yep. So back to Ralph. Uh, you said somewhat. I'm interested in what he talked about in, in, in the accent, a dedicated bus road to South Station. What the heck is that? It's Joe? the gray line. And what it is, it's a bus. It's, it's, it's an access road that only that bus can go on. Um, and it goes, you can take the train from Lynn, get off in, in Chelsea, get on the bus there, and it'll take you right to you South Station. You talked about this before, did you not? Yep. 
They just opened it two weeks ago. So this is this is a way of make. Well, that may be helpful for development of the city of Lynn. Right. And we're we're looking for new ways. Uh, governor Dukakis. Well, he's not the governor anymore. Former but governor. Dukakis. Former governor Dukakis was just on a show this past weekend talking about transportation and saying that. The governor's really got to look at it. In Massachusetts, our transportation really stinks. And he's wor and the governor is working to try to improve that, but it is so um, inadequate for our needs that he was saying from Salem to Boston, it took him two and a half hours the other day. And, and as I said, that right now we're in the process of rehabbing all the way from the bridge to Saugus River all the way to the Salem line, rehabbing Western Ave. And meaning, gonna, meaning when you say rehab, retiring it, making it wider, making it, you know, uh, timing? They're gonna, they're, yeah, they're going to be redoing right. a lot of the intersections, making them safer. Yeah. Uh, make, put federal new, federal or state? Yep, yeah, uh, federal and state. A combination, go ahead. Both. I think the state puts 80% or yeah, one it, it puts 80 and the other puts state road or a federal road right. anyhow, right? Right. Person. So, and it's not just that. There, there are um, seven intersections that we're looking at right now, and it's all going to be done with state and federal money to rehab them. There's uh, roadways that are going to be done. So I said, there's going to be over $70 million that are going to be invested. But I think the word rehab, I think better is to reconstruct. Right. Don't you think? Yep. And I do know that there is a bill that... Um, and I'm calling it the Benny Bill because that's the person who come up with it, um, that right now there's roughly $200 million, I believe, for Chapter 90 money that goes back to cities and towns. There used to be $300 million in there, but they've had to cut it back. So what he's proposing is that they put the back that $100 million and any community that matches their Chapter 90 money will get that money matched out of that $100 million. Except we, unfortunately, don't have any money to put up to match. No, but point. what we are in the process of doing, because Is we're what? doing it through bonding, because the bond companies want to see us invest in our infrastructure. So if we get $2 million from Chapter 90 this year, we want to be able to set up a fund through a bond that we can match that money. Let me ask you this. Our bond rating went down to double VA, did it not? Right. That means we've got to pay more juice right. to borrow money. And part of the reason being is because we weren't investing into our infrastructure. That's so, a big part of it, so, to be honest. So, I mean, somewhere along the line, and this is getting to Frankly Gina. Let me mm -hmm. read Frankly yep. Gina to you because yep. it's right. this is perfect. Right. What has been done, Frankly Gina, what has been done to balance Lynn's budget? Initiating a trash fee isn't going to do it. Right. That's what she says. Yep. Now, you agree with that? 100%. Okay. Now, Joe responds, and I'm, you know, I'm, I will, that's not me. I'm not the Joe, but a Joe responds. Mm -hmm. Even with the state loan, the city, meaning Lynn, yep. is still $7 million in the red come July 1st. Is right. he correct? Yep, he is. And the reason being... Wait a minute. Let's get okay. that phone call. Okay. Caller, you're on, frankly speaking. Oh, hey. Hi. Hi, Joe and Darren. Hi. I was just saying, the mayor is a wonderful man and all that. But when he came in, he right away took a big, big borrow from the government. Mm -hmm. The old mayor could have done that. I could have done that. What's so wonderful about that? He knew what he was getting into. What he had to do was be like Trump and cut many of the great salaries that I see going on. The city will never recover. As if we're giving out these salaries. When I see on TV the school committee, the water committee, the camera can't even contain them. They could be cut in half. And then with the city councilors, I read in the item a few weeks ago, the Peabody City Councilors are getting $4,000, and they're fighting to get make it 5000 so I immediately called the PDB City Hall. I said, am I reading wrong? He said, I'll look it up. They're getting $4,000. I said, our counselors are getting seven times as much in a city that the Lynn item has two pages every night. 
of people who are losing their homes up for auctions because of the high taxes. And yet, I remember when Cahill was the head of the council and gave an impassioned plea to raise the uh, funds, the salaries for the councillors, and they were getting 14000 I said, oh, they'll probably make it fifteen. You know what they got? Double. They're all getting over 25000 Now, I'm not saying, I'm not condemning any councillors. They're wonderful, God-fearing people. Don't get me wrong. But I'm just going for the future. A hundred years from now, none of those councillors will be there. And they saw a tax they didn't like. I, I don't want to interrupt, but you said a lot on I So I want to make sure that Darren is able to answer some of it. Stay on the line yeah. and let him uh, respond to you and, and interact with him. Go ahead. Well, the reason why they, they increased the salaries of the councillors, they were getting $25,000. And with, they were getting a stipend. Mm -hmm. And um, they wanted to bring everything out in the open so everybody knew exactly what they were going getting for money. Average counselor in the city of Lynn probably works about 60 or 70 hours a week between doing, you Particularly know. Particularly a ward counselor. A, a ward counselor is, I mean, a snowstorm, you know, there are counselors that use their own vehicles. Right, to, you don't have to justify the time. Right. Address, address the critical issue here. Okay. So, I mean, in order to get people to run for office, you mm -hmm. have to make it worth while for them as well. Um, the mayor borrowed the money because if he didn't borrow the money and the city council did, what, we would have wanted, been in receivership. It's that simple. Simple thing is this, uh, Carla. Uh, I believe the city council, and I say this uh, with all due, as they, what's the word, all due respect, I guess. Know, which is yep. a cop out. Yep. Look, the city council has nothing to do with budget can't handle a budget, it's all the mayor, and it's always has been the mayor. And I find it difficult for you to be in a position of talking about economics and budget yep. when all you can do is say yes or no. Right. And if you say no, nothing's going to happen. Right. But I will say this, the mayor has, has included the council um, in a lot of the decision making. He's only been there now five months. I understand that. And I understand a, you talk to him on a regular basis yep. and try to coordinate. But here's the point, and I think this is where the caller makes a point. Mm -hmm. All right, nobody knew about $5.8 million for Hood School. Right. Nobody knew about that. Uh, that, that hits us with $1.2 million more. Oh, we're going to bond it out. Yep. Uh, by the way, we're going to have uh, $70 million worth of roads, infrastructure. Oh, yeah, really? Oh, uh, we're going to match it. Oh, we have to match that. No, no we but, don't. No, we bond it. But we no, have to, we don't do that either for that. So, so that $70 where, where, million. Where are we dollars. Coming up? Where, what, what do we have to bond? What is dollar for dollar? It's state and federal money, 100%. Okay. We have another caller. Caller, you're on Frankly Speaking. Oh, it's me again. I didn't get to begin to go into what I wanted to say. I wanted to say that uh, Kathy Latham, that heroine so-called, she couldn't wait to get to the uh, meeting for the raising the tax for the trash. Her salary and Paul's salary alone could cover almost all of the trash, trash fees in Lynn. When I heard they were getting almost 300000 and I hear people like Sarah Huckabee Sanders and all these, she goes through so much with the press, she's getting 140000 a year. And I just read in the item lately some pharmacists, international, there's a big fuss because they're getting 102000 a year. And here we are, a little hick city like Lynn, that people can't live with the high taxes, paying people 300000 When I heard the head of France and the head of Germany were coming over to talk to Flynn, I said, they're coming to try to get the job for ah, superintendent of schools when they heard she was... There's nobody. I take it non-disputandum. Facts I, cannot be disputed. If you can find anybody that's getting as much as them in the whole world, including Putin, the president only gets 400000 and he has to pay all of his own food and everything. It comes down to less than 300000 So you see, the 
It's not all true. So, you know, in this, look, there is an anger out there, right. agreed? Right. And, and the anger has to do with the people in the public sector who are supposed to be serving the people right. are doing marvelously well economically. Well, I mean, I, I, I hear teachers, and I'm one, who are always comping about their pay scale, but if you take a look at the vehicles in the parking lot, their SUVs that go for 40, 50 grand a clip, they're yeah. living pretty good. Right. They you are know? living pretty good. Uh, the superintendent makes, on average, what, what other superintendents do. Lynn is, the, uh, I believe, the third largest school district. Eighth. Eighth, okay. Yeah. Eighth, Eighth in the state right. out of 351 cities and towns. Right. Um, she makes roughly, I think, two hundred and thirty thousand is what she That's makes. That's a raise. Oh, yo, she makes two thirty. Yeah. With the incoming, is she, the income is not going to make two thirty. Uh, I don't know what the incoming is. I, it's around two hundred. But I also know this: that the school budget and the city budget are two different things. The trash fee has absolutely nothing to do with the school budget. But the trash fee is going to raise at best a couple of million dollars. Right. I mean, that, does, that, that, that doesn't pay for manicures for the superintendent of school. No, but what it does is when we have a $6 million trash fee, a trash bill every year, it, it brings that down to, to less than $6 million. Well, you know, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. We also have a water and sewer commission that's going to go up, and that's fundamentally a tax. I yep. mean, you arbitrarily said, and I was the guy to put it together, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to make a utility. Well, that was all good and well. But yeah, it used to be paid for on the tax bill, right. if you remember. It's so a now that's going to be another five or six hundred. Well, it's a commission. And, it, and the reason why the state and the feds wanted a commission up there was because they wanted to separate it. Right, but tell me about it. Didn't happen that way. We're going to take a quick flight break, break, and we'll be back. You've always protected me. Every day of my life. There you go. I'm older now, but I still need you. Prescription pain pills, heroin. I know kids are getting addicted and people are dying. Can you still protect me? You can protect your teen. Teens who talk to their parents about opioids are less likely to misuse them. Find out what you can say. Controlling and isolation, physical, emotional, and sexual abuse, threats, and blaming are all types of domestic violence. Boys who witness domestic violence are three times likely to become a batterer. One in three women experience domestic violence. 26% of teenagers report it. Two to four million women are battered each year. If you or someone you know is experiencing domestic violence, call 800-799-7233 or go to thehotline.org. And welcome back where truth is our mission, rally our realm, said as we see it, and frankly as well. Frankly, Gina made the point that what are we doing about balancing the budget? You can hit that a little bit. But I really would like to go to, do, is Joe correct that we have a $7 million shortfall regardless, even after borrowing the money come July 1st? Yeah, we, we actually just found out that our insurance costs and... The, the health insurance hasn't been fully budget uh, funded for the last several years, and instead of having like we should have an eight million dollar surplus, we're in the hole seven million dollars. So that's a fifteen million dollar shift. Uh, shift. Well, it, eight to, to seven, eight plus eight minus seven. Yeah, is we've 15. taken care of the the eight. Yeah. Um, and we're taking care of the seven as well. And one of the ways that we're doing it, and this is touching on what Gina was just talking about, what are we doing? We've sat down and we renegotiated with the unions their health insurance costs, and we've saved about roughly about $3 million there for this year. So we are working on taking care of that issue, and every single day the mayor, department heads, and the council are working on ways, along with Sean Cronin from the state, um, trying to come up with a way so that we can have a balanced budget by June 1st. By June 1st of, of this year. Of this year? Yep. So wouldn't you let the $1.2 on the Hood School go by the boards in order to accommodate that? 
We can't, and the reason being is because the build, the roof is leaking. I understand that. Leaking. My roof is so, leaking too, but I can't afford it because I got to pay you taxes. Right. Originally, as I said, the cost was going to be roughly around four million, and the mayor wasn't aware of it, and it was a mistake that when you spend a certain amount of money, that you have to bring the building up to handicap uh, I got accessible. That. So that's why we have to come up with the extra. Money. Oh, yeah, that's a mill. So Look, we were talking about roughly about seven hundred thousand dollars. What the city would have had to come up with. Council President, I backed out of my car, my garage, yep. and forgot that the garage door wasn't fully up, mm -hmm. and my convertible top is no longer. Right. I couldn't collect from anybody. It cost me two grand. I didn't like it, but it cost me two grand. Therefore, I don't scratch tickets. You get what I mean? Therefore, I'm on. I'm on. And this is not to knock you, but you weren't prepared, and you didn't prepare to your Whatever. insurance. Whatever. You went so, for the cheapest insurance you could possibly go for. That's why you got to pay the two thousand dollars. So, and that's what we've done for the last several years: is always taking the cheapest way out. So, as I said earlier, this is like preventative medicine. But that you we have guys, to fix the building. you guys borrow money on a false predicate. And what's happened is, is post borrowing the money from the state, a whole bunch of other things came in that you weren't aware of. Right. So that fourteen million is not sufficient to cover your shortfall. Right. Yep. That's the net bottom line. What do you yep. do now? That's the point I'm trying to make. And, and, that, and, and I'm that's not what faulting you. Right. That's we are trying to to fix that. Well, if you don't fix it, receivership is right around the corner. And, and we're going to do our utmost. And I, I, I don't believe we're going to go into receivership. I believe that we are going to be able to fix the problem and the issue that's there. Uh, in the past, I like the word believe, but I don't hear no. Yep. I don't hear positive. See, belief is a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. Knowing is a little better. Yep. I can 99% assure you that we are not Ivy going to Soap. go into this. Is Ivy Soap now? Yep. Folks, I never hear 781, 780, 9460. Even I learn from the show. Mm -hmm. I have no idea that. We're seven million dollars shot no matter what. Spy versus spy. You hear about Spygate? Mm -hmm. How do you like this? Not me. Oh, all of a sudden, he doesn't know anything about it. Meanwhile, they're all pointing their finger. Wait till heads roll. They're all going to say, POTUS told us to spy. And that's coming out now. You know that? Yep. What do you think of a country? I mean, they took Watergate, was child's play compared to this. You know that? The Dems and the Republicans have been spying on each other ever since they've had the Dems and the but Republicans. But not like this, and they deny well, that. I, I, mean, I mean, only because it's all coming out now. Everybody's they wouldn't pointing have come fingers. out if Trump didn't win. If t Trump didn't win, our right. civil liberties would be down the tubes. Yep. I mean, the nanny state was, oh, it was here. You got Clapper there telling lies all over the place. Brennan, who voted for a communist, for God's sakes, for president, he's the head of our CIA. What kind of crazy stuff is going on in this country? You know what I mean? Listen, I'm not saying a Trump. We need guys like this guy right here. Who? Churchill. Speaking of that, you, that's your job. Yep. Which when is that happening? May 25th at 8 o'clock at tomorrow. City Hall. Yep. And what can happen? Put Dark, it up there, the, folks. The movie The Darkest Hour is going to be played there. That's a great picture. We're, it's a brand new movie. And we're, we're going to have a brand new movie here in Lynn. Yeah. And you'll be able to go in and you'll be able to buy refreshments. No, they're freebies. No, the alcohol is not free. They're not? No. But you'll be able to get refreshments, cash bar, it's air conditioned. Oh, this is at the auditorium? At the auditorium. Okay. You're also doing uh, another movie here, right? Yeah, and, uh, but that's in, uh, on June 8th, my favorite. Okay. You know, A Fistful of Dollars. Yep. When Clint Great Eastwood movie. was Clint. Yep. Oh, I loved it, right. Yep. And that's free to the public, and that's going to be, comf you know, first, first, yeah, first come, first serve, popcorn, soda water, and the rest of it. 181 Union Street, uh, downtown. It's our studio here. So it's every other Friday. Mm -hmm. They're going to show a movie here, a classic movie yep. uh, for that. And I got another one to do, Memorial Day Parade. Monday. Monday. Where's the start? Do you know? Uh, you know what time? I don't. Neither do I. If you know, let us know. Uh, by the way, I do know. Uh, I believe 1 o'clock. I don't it, know. I'm trying to read it. It used to go from... City Hall Square down to Boston Street, right? I think you're right, yeah. So I'm assuming it's going to take the same parade, parade route that it always does. 
And something about the Lions Club. Uh, they have a memorial tree service, which is Saturday at 2, and that will be at the Lynn Commons opposite the library. Yep. So Lions Club memorial tree service uh, at 2 p.m. Saturday. We got a couple of minutes left, but I want to get back to, can, can you put my dear friend uh, POTUS, the farmer POTUS, you know, the guy that didn't spy? Don't you like that? The guy who didn't spy. I mean, this is really serious business. And for Moulton and for Elizabeth Warren and for the rest of the Democratic delegation in this state, not to say a peep, they'd be out of there. They'd be apoplectic. They'd make the volcano in Hawaii look like nothing if this was happening in reverse. Why are you smiling? You know I'm telling the truth. Folks, you know that I don't, you know, I may, I may. I, lo I look at it like this, like yeah. two kids in a sandbox. One kid kicks sand in the other kid's face and, you know, they, they can't play together because they can't get along. They both need a timeout, is my feeling. Trump and um, you have Wait a minute. There. Trump's got 91% negative, negative coverage since he's been president. I totally they absolutely, agree. they got on their hands and yep. knees and were kissing the rear side of Barack Obama yep. no matter what he did. Yep. Okay, so it's, this is not an apple is not, I mean, right. this is not an equal no, equation. I, I agree. I don't think that Trump has been uh, dealt with fairly in he's, the press. And he's done some marvelous things that nobody gives him any credit for. He's done some okay things. He gave the things. Congressional Medal of Honor out to a guy today. He was terrific. Wow. You know, the, I the mean, fans. you know, these guys are sins. Yep. How about the latest one? Which one? You want gossip, folks? How about this one? Driving Miss Stacy, I loved him. Oh, yeah. They just grabbed yep. him for uh, yep. eight, eight women are coming after him. Yep. I mean, this world has gone completely insane. Yep. You can't look at anybody. You can't no. touch him. I mean, he wasn't a good guy or a good boy, I guess, is the way to... Well, you know, we get this perception. And then, then, then I... Uh, listen, we're not going to have milk and lint anymore. We're not going to have jet engines in Lynn anymore. Hopefully, we're going to have wonderful condominiums and living quarters in Lynn. I like the idea of art. I like the idea of entertainment and good cuisine. You know, we have a beautiful, beautiful city here. Mm -hmm. We really do. Ocean, Lynn Woods, great golf course. We have great library. A we terrific have the housing building. stock, gorgeous yep. architecture. We got a lot to up, all the restaurants in the I, city. You got uh, the movie night. Yeah, rah -rah. concerts, yeah. rah, rah I mean, there's so much, so much to do here. We can compete with Boston. Think you know, about it. And I just hope that we, and, and I thank you for having the courage to come on here weekly and face the folks out there and not dodge the questions. And, you know, I hope we keep doing it. Next week, same time, same station? I'm going to, I'm going to try. I can't guarantee I'll be here next week. Okay. Because I have something that's coming up. It's actually at the GAR building. But you're always, you're always, you know, you're always here when you can be, and I yep. appreciate that. You're going to be at the GRE building doing something special? That's well, a good I'm, thing. I'm hoping that some of our politicians come and take a look at the building and see what the need is that we need there. You're trying to save a little history, huh? Yep. Folks, you see why this guy is the council president? You understand why? Because he's like you, down to earth, and we don't have enough politicians like you.